Hey friend, Graham here from RecordingRevolution.com. Really excited today starting a brand new mini-series where we are going to mix a song together. That's right, you and me, we're going to do this together. I want to mix a song in front of you in the next six videos, step by step. I'm going to do it right here in front of you so you can see my mixing workflow. And then I also want you to be able to download the same tracks I'm working on import them into your software of choice where you like to mix and mix the same material along with me. This is the best way to learn. So you not only see me mixing and hear me mixing, but you can go try the same stuff on the exact same tracks using your tools. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to be mixing a song today called Southern Road by a fantastic band called The Lack Family. They literally are a family of five. They all play and sing and tour the world together. I got to meet Scott, the father of the band, uh, the dad in the band uh, earlier this year. Great guy, super talented band love their stuff and I wanted to really feature them here. So we're going to be mixing one of their songs called Southern Road. And in the, the description here in the post, you'll be able to um, have access to the same stems and tracks as well. So you can download these tracks and mix along with me. And in a six part series, I'm going to go through my mixing process, how I like to mix music. There's a lot of ways to do it, but you can at least see my mixing process. And so, you know, I've got raw tracks. I haven't touched these at all. These are as given to me by Scott and the band, just imported into Pro Tools. And I'll walk you through my entire process. Just a heads up, if you want the stems now and if you want a little guide I put together, it's a mixing checklist, which is going to be like a reminder for you as you're mixing your song to remind yourself of what steps I'm doing in this video, plus a couple that I can't show on camera uh, to save some time. It's a simple checklist I put together that you can download at mixingchecklist.com. How creative is that? Go to mixingchecklist.com, download the simple PDF checklist so you can follow along with the steps. And you can also download the stems there as well. So you have these exact same tracks to mix. So in today's video, we're going to start with the most important step, which is the static mix. But before we do that, there's two other steps, one that I've already done and one that I'm going to do real quick. Uh, the steps before that are organizing your session. I don't really have a lot of time to talk about that in today's video, but just to make it quick, and I include this in the mixing checklist PDF, is I like to organize tracks um, by drums on the left. So when I get the tracks, they're all in different order. I do drums on the left, then I do bass instrument, then I do guitars all together, then I do any keyboard, strings, or other virtual instruments, then I do vocals. And then I round it off with a master fader on the far right. That is how I like to organize, but you can organize them the way you prefer. I also color code, as you see here. I put all my groups in one color so I can quickly and easily tell, oh, these are guitars because they're all light blue, or these are orange, so they're all going to be keys of some kind, or these are all the drums, they're all red. I really like to organize like that. Step two is gain staging, and for this section of the mix, I just want you to understand what gain staging is. It's getting levels appropriate for mixing, because honestly, when you get tracks like this, they could be well recorded, but a lot of times, guess what? They're too loud. So let's find that out. Let's take a listen to what we got here to work with, and you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to press play, and it's going to sound great, and not only will it not be balanced, but you'll notice that a lot of tracks are really loud. We're already clipping and the vocals haven't come in yet, okay? Uh, and then here come the vocals. Look how loud that tambourine is. So what I want you to see is so many of these tracks are really hovering up here in the 90% of the way up the meter. It's just too much volume. It's clipping the master fader, which just means that you're going to get a really bad sound because it's clipping your converter. 
you're shoving too much sound into a small pipe. So before you even begin mixing, you want to make sure that you pull the gain, the actual waveform of certain tracks down so that you've got more conservative levels. And so I'm going to go through on any track here in Pro Tools, and a lot of DAWs are the same. You'll notice like there's a little teeny fader icon at the bottom of the actual wave clip that I can increase or decrease the, um, the actual, whoops, the actual volume and actual level of the track. It's not the fader, it's the actual level of the track. So if I decrease the room mic here, it makes the waveform actually smaller. The signal's actually lower before it hits any plugins, before it hits the fader. So I like to start at the clip level by turning things down if they're too loud. So I'm just gonna go through, I know those vocals were really hot. So I'm gonna go through here. Like, let's look at her lead vocal here. Face the southern road. So that's probably the loudest she gets. She doesn't need to be that loud, so I'm gonna pull her down a little bit. These background vocals, I'm gonna pull them down a bit. Um, same thing here, let's see. Get these two, these are Scott's vocals. I wonder who I could be. I'm gonna turn those down a little bit. Because the whole goal here is to make your DAW and your software and your interface sound as good as possible, and in the digital world, you don't need a hot signal. You're not fighting any hiss or tape hiss or console noise. Um, you don't need to be loud to beat that, that noise because there really is no noise. You have a really clean signal and even a modestly priced audio interface. So there's no benefit to being loud in the digital domain, um, but there's benefit to being quiet like this acoustic guitar. That just level doesn't need to be there, so I'm gonna take it down a little bit. Um, strings, let's see. It's probably fine, but I'll pull it down a little bit. Piano, let's see. That's fine. Um, let's see, the guitar solo. That's probably fine, I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. And then these drums, like the tambourine, does, there's no reason that needs to be peaking that much. With drums, it's a little different. They can peak a little higher. It's not really that pro uh, much of a problem. So like the snare can peak a little higher, but I'll pull that down just a bit. Snare top, I'll pull that down a bit. And uh, the kick I'll pull down a little bit. Let's see if any of that's helping. I just wanna make sure that I don't have too hot of a signal, so let's get to the chorus here. Still that kick trigger is really, really loud, so I can bring that down a bit. So I'm still peaking a little bit, and it's probably the drums because they're still pretty hot. So what I'm gonna try to do is get closer to those levels. Here's my goal. I like to see meters, individual meters, peaking no higher than 75% of the way up. 50 to 75% of the way up is what I like to do. And this takes just a little bit of time going through and making sure things aren't too hot. Now, this is with all the volume faders at zero all the way up, and they're not gonna stay there. I'm gonna pull some tracks down, but I like to start with the levels being, you know, 50 to 75% of the way up. That means that not only am I sending less signal to the master fader, but I'm sending a more appropriate level through my plugins that'll eventually put on here, which will make the plugins sound better. If you read the manual for a lot of your plugins, they operate at a sweet spot, and uh, you can find what that is and less signal generally is what makes the plugins sound their best. So this is a gain staging. This is like a bonus tip before we get into the static mix. No one really seems to want to talk about this or do it. Uh, people think it's not that big of a deal. It's a very big deal. Um, this is how mixing was done for years, is getting level appropriate before you run it through your console or run it through your effects. It still applies today. Um, if you can get level right, everything else is much, much easier. Which leads me to today's main step, the static mix. Here's the simple concept, and then I'm gonna close my mouth and move faders. 
we want to get a balance of these faders. And my goal is to make the song balanced and sound great with just the right volume level and pan. I don't want to have to use plugins to get a good balance. The plugin should enhance the balance, give a bit more clarity, a bit more punch, a little more excitement, but they should not create the balance. The balance comes with just faders and pan pots. So before we add a single plugin, we're going to create a balance right in front of you. So what I'm going to do, and what I recommend you do when you get these tracks, is loop the song. So pretend you're a live sound engineer, loop the song, and just press play and start playing with faders and start creating a balance. I like to pull all the faders down, except for the master fader, of course, and start building a fader uh, balance, excuse me, from scratch, lifting it up and going from there. Other people like to start with them all up and then adjusting from there. There's no right or wrong here, but I have found that this helps me uh, get a balance quicker if I start from scratch. So I'm gonna do my best here to press play and I'm gonna just go through and start to bring up the volume and then create some panning positions for things and then we'll assess from there. Here we go. Tom's in here. Pull them up. First, let's see where are the Tom's panned in the overheads. Right, 
pretty tight. So maybe this is here. Maybe this is here. So I think we're starting to get a little balance here and you can get a taste of what I'm doing in the static mix. I'm just, I love this stage because I'm pretending I'm a live mix engineer. The band is playing. I can't stop them. I can't say, go back to the chorus. My job is to just fly around, grab faders and make something happen. It brings the work back into it the way it used to be. So you can sort of see, you know, I'm trying to make sure the drums are balanced to each other. I'm trying to make sure there's low end there. Um, I'm trying to make sure the guitars complement each other left and right. Uh, I'm trying to get the strings and the piano balance. You know, I was playing with the background vocals. And all the while, I'm looking, too, at the master fader to make sure that um, it's not clipping for sure and that, ideally, I'm leaving a little bit of headroom. You know, anywhere from minus three to minus six at the top was where I'm peaking would be sweet. So let's get to a chorus just to check that. Let's take a look. So I'm peaking higher than I'd like to. So there's two things you could do here depending on the way your doll works. You could group all the tracks together and pull them down since you like their balance. So for example, I could create the all group here in Pro Tools and bring everything down a little bit and it keeps the relative balance. And then I ungroup it and put the master fader back where it was. That's a better level signal-wise. I might, you know, half the distance, bring it up a little bit. Um, that gives me more space, more headroom, so that when I start adding plugins and if I actually change my mind and want to increase or, de you know, something a little bit uh, in the balance, I won't run into the, the top. I don't want to get close to clipping. My converters will sound better. The mix will sound cleaner. And that's your goal in the static mix stage is to just get a great balance and pretend that the volume fader and the pan pot is all you have control over. Pretend like plugins don't exist. If you had to deliver a great sounding mix with just this, what would you do? It's not going to be a perfect mix, but if you had to deliver a great sounding mix with just volume and pan, what would you do? Okay, in the next video, we're going to start bringing in some plugins to the mix, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I've put together, like I said, a checklist for you, a mixing checklist, so you have all the steps for how I like to mix with some tips and tricks on each step. 
that you can literally print out as a simple PDF put in front of you when you're mixing really, really short to the point so you can go step one, step two, step three. You can grab that checklist and the stems, the multi-tracks that I'm mixing right here in this video series. So you can download those and mix along with me. You can get all of that at mixingchecklist.com for free. Just download it. That way we can mix together. That's the whole point of this series is to mix together. And again, we're mixing the song Southern Road by the Lack Family. Show them some love. Go to thelackfamily.com. I'll link to them as well so you can check out the rest of their music and support them if you dig their vibe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you on part two of this mixing series.